Hi, thank you for watching Digging to China. I'm Dong Xiong. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Nearly a decade after its launch, the Belt and the Road Initiative is slowly vanishing from Chinese leaders' speeches. The Belt and the Road Initiative, BRI, once nicknamed the Project of the Century, has been China's main branding strategy for its foreign policy over the past decade. And it was systematically and fanatically associated with Xi Jinping. But Xi himself has been among the leaders who have used the term the least in their speeches as of late. The term ceased exists in Xi Jinping's speeches this year, at least in the English versions published for international audience. The BRI is fading away from Xi's most important speeches, such as those given at the Boao Forum, BRICS, or the United Nations. The BRI is not only disappearing from Xi's speeches, but also from Xi's agenda. While in 2017 and 2019, Xi was using the Belt and the Road Forum to welcome leaders from all around the world to Beijing. These past few years, the BRI didn't have a presidential forum. Instead, Foreign Minister Wang Yi was the Chinese leader in charge of hosting an advisory council of the Belt and the Road Forum in 2021. She basically delegated the forum to Wang. While in Chinese, Yi Dai Yi Lu, literally one belt, one road, has maintained its position as the name for the Belt and the Road Initiative. In English, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is now translating this Chinese name with terms like cooperation or partnership. In the past, the Chinese government was insistent on its branding as the Belt and the Road Initiative, and heavily discouraged the idea of the Belt and the Road being associated with the words like a strategy, project, a plan, or other concepts. Now Beijing seems to be changing its narrative about the Belt and the Road for foreign audiences, migrating in from initiative to cooperation. Maybe because cooperation sounds more friendly, while initiative can be read as suggesting a top-down geopolitical plan. Other than the reasons of public relations, there is a more pragmatic reason behind the dial-down of BRI. According to Wall Street Journal's report, a slowing global economy combined with rising interest rates and higher inflation have left the countries struggling to repay their debts to China. Tens of billions of dollars of loans have gone sour, and numerous development projects have stalled. Many economists and investors have said the country's lending practices have contributed to debt crisis in places like Sri Lanka and Zambia. After nearly a decade of pressing Chinese banks to be generous with loans, Chinese policymakers are discussing a more conservative program that would more rigorously evaluate new projects for financing, aka Belt and the Road 2.0. They have also become open to accepting some losses on loans and negotiating debt. At a November meeting with senior officials, Mr. Xi noted that the international environment for Belt and the Road was becoming increasingly complex, and stressed the need to strengthen risk controls and expand cooperation. Nearly 60% of China's overseas loans are now held by countries considered to be in financial distress. Back in 2010, this ratio is only 5%. Chinese banks have already sharply reduced lending for new projects in low-income countries as they focus on cleaning up their existing loan portfolios. The process could force Chinese banks to accept losses, something they've long opposed. For years, Beijing preferred to extend the maturity of troubled loans, a practice known in the financial industry as extend and pretend. That strategy risks prolonging countries' debt woes rather than fixing them. Beijing has also dialed down its rhetoric in state media. While it used to tout the economic benefits of Chinese lending for recipient countries, it now emphasizes managing risks and improving international cooperation. China is attempting a course correction. 
While the BRI was downgraded due to the multitude of criticism that it has received over the past years, it is not dead and it won't easily disappear, as it should mainly be perceived as China's foreign policy branding strategy. Mr. Xi is seeking to extend his rule for a third term at the Communist Party on conclave this month. He continues to believe it has an important role to play in promoting China's role on the world stage. As a matter of fact, Belt and the Road is mutating toward a new narrative, the Global Development Initiative GDI. Xi himself launched it during a speech at the UN General Assembly in September 2021. The GDI Global Development Initiative is as vague as the BRI it used to be. It talks about promoting development in parallel with the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development by improving people's lives, helping developing countries, driving innovation, and being a link between people and nature. While the GDI aims to be a greener, high-quality focused, better BRI. In reality, it is just another slogan that fits China's needs. And while the Global Development Initiative becomes the new trending term in Chinese leaders' speeches, it has already proved that it doesn't have the charm of the Belt and the Road Initiative. China's image itself has deteriorated, affecting any new initiative it proposes. Without a great reception, many of these ideas will remain just a name. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly. Until then, be well.